Hi, we're out on the ranch today, so please bear with gunfire here in the background. Recently, a lot of people have contacted me asking about something called wax slugs. Now, that term can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But specifically, what I'm talking about is when you take a shot shell that has birdshot in it, cut it open, dump the birdshot out, and then replace that with a mixture of molten wax and birdshot. So you have all your birdshot inside a single solid wax projectile. Let me show you a close-up of what I'm talking about. So here's before and after. I did not cut the shell off, I just cut the crimp out, dumped out the shot, and then melted wax in a frying pan, specifically Parawax household wax, and then dumped a mixture of the molten wax and shot back into the shell and let it harden. And I used the Parawax household wax only because that was the wax available at my local store. So now that we know what the wax slug is, many questions come up about it, and today I want to address four of them. First is, when you shoot this wax slug, will it go down range intact or will it break apart and go down range in multiple pieces? Secondly, if it does remain intact when it goes down range, what kind of accuracy are we going to achieve? Third, what kind of effect are we going to get on the intended target? Especially, what kind of effect will we get in comparison to conventional birdshot, buckshot, or slugs? And four, why? When you can go to the store and buy conventional birdshot, buckshot, or slugs, why would you go to all the trouble of making your own wax slugs? Well, let's see if we can shed some light on those four questions. So first, let's discuss whether or not the projectiles will stay together until they hit the target and accuracy. I've got my Mossberg Model 500 shotgun with a 20-inch improved cylinder bore barrel, and I have it loaded with our wax slugs, which started out as Winchester Super Target 12-gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, 1 ounce of number 7 and a half shot. And we'll shoot our target from 15 yards. Let's see what happens. So let's interpret our target. My first shot was a little low, and this impact in the head might look really cool, but that was just the shot cup. Subsequent shots held a really good group, and we do see a few pellet impacts, so some of the pellets were coming out of the slug, but for the most part, they're holding together and they're accurate. Now I've got my Mossberg 500 shotgun loaded with some wax slugs that originally were Remington 12 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, 1 and a quarter ounce of number 4 lead bird shot. We'll put up a new shoot and see, and I'll shoot it from 20 yards, and let's see what kind of accuracy we can get. Well, using our wax slugs that were based on our Remington ammunition, I don't see any stray birdshot impacts. They held together very well. However, our accuracy was terrible. Sometimes when I have one that's way off, I'll say, that's a flyer, that's just me. In this case, no, that was a very well-aimed shot. Our accuracy was just very poor. So it looks like you have to be careful which shot shells you use as the basis to make your wax slugs. Now let's discuss the effectiveness of our wax slugs, and to do that we're going to use the meat target. For those who haven't seen it before, the meat target is leather couch skin followed by pork steak pectoral, pork ribs, a bag of oranges to simulate lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back, four layers of t-shirt on the front, four layers on the back, and the whole thing followed by the new and improved high-tech police bullet stop. And I've got my Mossberg 500 shotgun loaded with the unaltered version of the Winchester Super Target 12 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, 1 ounce of number 7 and half lead bird shot. And I'll shoot the meat target from 5 yards, we'll see what kind of damage it does, then put together a new meat target, shoot it with the wax slug, and see how the damage compares. Now first I have to remind everyone that this was 12 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, 1 ounce of number 7.5 lead bird shot. 
As 12 gauge birdshot goes, this was not a particularly powerful round. And keeping that in mind, from five yards, here's what your pork steak pectoral looks like. Here's the ribs on the front of the target. Now that might not look like a lot of damage, but it was. Our orange lung tissue has a lot of damage to it, and virtually all of the pellets were stopped somewhere in the orange lung tissue. Some of them made it to the ribs on the back of the target, but none of them penetrated the ribs on the back of the target. So, at very close ranges, birdshot can be pretty effective. Now we'll put together a new meat target and shoot it with our wax slug and see how the damage compares. So now we have a new meat target set up and have a Mossberg Model 500 loaded with our Winchester Super Wax Slug. And I'll shoot this from five yards and see what kind of damage we can do. Well, we've got our meat target taken apart. There's your pork steak pectoral. And here's your ribs on the back of the target. Also, we see a lot of damage to our orange lung tissue. In my subjective observation, it looks like significantly more damage done to the orange lung tissue by the wax slug than by the bird shot. And in terms of penetration, we got the exact same results with the slug as we did with the bird shot. Some of the pellets made it to the ribs on the back of the target, none made it through. So it would appear that when you're comparing your wax slug to your bird shot at very close range, you're seeing more damage. But this target really tells us two very important things. One, at very close ranges, don't underestimate the damage that can be done by birdshot. And two, we saw that with our Winchester-based wax slugs, at 15 yards, they're holding a pretty good group. We would expect at 20 or 25 yards, you're still going to be able to hit the target every time. And at that distance, your wax slug is still going to do this kind of damage, as where at that distance, your birdshot will have lost a great deal of its effectiveness. So how will our wax slugs compare to conventional 12 gauge slugs? I've got a new meat target set up and I have my Mossberg 500 loaded with Remington 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch, one ounce rifled slug. Let's shoot these from five yards and see what kind of damage we can do. Looks like it gives a whole new definition to the term fast food. And there's your ribs on the front of the target. Now there's been times where I've shot a meat target with 12 gauge slugs where the slug has not only gone completely through the meat target, but completely through the fleece bullet stop. Today, that slug was stopped by the t-shirt on the back of the target. Let's take a look at what's left of the slug. And there you go. It's still completely intact, but it's kind of flat. So our four questions. First, Will the wax slug stay intact when it leaves the muzzle? It looks like the answer is, for the most part, yes. Secondly, what kind of accuracy can we expect to get from our wax slugs? And it looks like if you use the right type of ammunition as the basis for your wax slug and you assemble it correctly, you're not going to get accuracy equal to what you'd get with traditional slugs, but for most applications, the accuracy will be acceptable. Third, what kind of damage are we going to get from our wax slug on the intended target in comparison to what we're getting from other types of ammunition? And we saw that at very close ranges, birdshot can be effective, but our wax slug was definitely more effective. And the real important part of that is, as your range increases, the effectiveness of your birdshot will significantly decrease, and the wax slug will retain that effectiveness at far greater ranges than birdshot will. But we also saw that our wax slug's effectiveness paled in comparison to our traditional one-ounce rifled slug. And that brings us to point four. Why? Why would you go to all the trouble of making your own wax slugs when you could go to the store and buy traditional slugs, which would be more accurate and more effective? I'm sure there's many answers to that question, but I want to discuss what I would consider to be top three. First one being cost. I paid $8 for this box of 25 rounds of birdshot. I paid $5 for this box of five rounds of slugs. Cost can be a big factor. Secondly, a big factor can be your local laws. There are some jurisdictions where shotgun slugs are very strictly regulated and in some cases completely prohibited. So when you can't get slugs, you can make your own. Which brings up the point of, if you can't get slugs, is making your own violating your local laws. Different jurisdictions have different laws. The only thing I can tell you is that before you modify any firearm or any ammunition, you must check your local laws. 
Now third is a matter of availability. Traditionally, you can buy shotgun slugs anywhere that you could buy shotgun ammunition. But in the very recent past, we found it difficult to get a lot of different types of ammunition, especially ammunitions like 223, 5.56, 9mm, and shotgun, buckshot, and slugs. I just about had a thrombo a couple of days ago when I was at the local store and actually found slugs. So one reason to make your own is that you can't find traditional shotgun slugs. So, as always, don't try this at home, and thanks for watching the Wax Shotgun Slug video.